kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I help produce this show you're listening to. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for being here with us. It means so much that you're choosing to spend your time listening to this show and hearing what we've made for you. We truly couldn't do this without you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Activators! A kids podcast about activism. I'm your host, Leo Bella Perry. On this podcast, we want to celebrate and amplify kids who are activating social change by doing what they love to spread more love. Social change means providing opportunities for other people and communities to recognize what's wrong and do something about it for the betterment of humanity. And on today's show, we're talking to Ryan Jean, the founder of Race to Kindness. But first, how are you feeling today on a scale of one to five one being things are rough and five being off the charts amazing. I'd say I'm a good four. No matter how you're feeling, it's all okay. I'm glad you're here with me today. And doing a self check can help you understand how ready you are to learn new things or meet new people. For now, you can just sit back and relax and get ready to be inspired. Today's guest is Ryan G, the 2020 National Kindness Speech Contest winner and the founder of Race to Kindness. You'll learn all about Race to Kindness in my interview with Orion. But let me say, it's pretty incredible. While you listen, think about the needs in your community and how you might be able to help. As you'll hear, Orion doesn't do it alone, but with help, the work he's done in his community is huge. Maybe hearing Ryan's story will inspire you as well. He's definitely an activator who I can't wait for you to meet. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? I am great. All right. Can you tell us what uh, your name and your age is? I am Orion Jean, and I am 10 years old. So, out of a one to five, one being the worst, five being feeling amazing, how are you feeling today? I am a four and a half, you know. I'm not perfect. No day will ever be. But I am feeling pretty good. Cool. Okay. What is one of your favorite hobbies? Well, I would have to say one of my favorite hobbies would be reading. I also like reading. Oh, cool. So what's your favorite book? I do not have a favorite book, actually. A lot of people wonder what my favorite book is, but I think that it would be unfair to the next book that I might read because who knows that could just as easily become my favorite as well. I never know. So I always want to keep an open mind, but I love all kinds of books. Orion loves books. So you might be thinking race to kindness has something to do with reading. You're not wrong, but it's actually much, much more than that. What are you doing to try to change the world? I am trying to collect materials for children and adults across the country for those who may not have them. For example, uh, toys for children in the hospital, food for those who may be homeless or maybe they're just food insecure, and books for those who live in, we call it book deserts. That's a phrase I've never heard of before. Book desert. What do you think it means? A book desert is a place where There aren't a lot of people who have access to books. There aren't as many children or adults with books in their homes. And they don't have the, sometimes they don't have the money. Or in librarians' case, they don't have the time. And it's hard for them to obtain books that they can own. So your home might be a book desert if it doesn't have a lot of books. Your classroom might be a book desert. A library can even be a book desert if certain types of books are hard to get, like they don't have cooking books or comic books or books about whatever you're trying to look for. How are you 
doing what you uh, really enjoy doing to make other people happy? Well, I, as I told you, I'm a big reader and I want to be able to share my love of literacy with other people across the country. I want to make sure that as many people as possible can benefit from the, uh, the joy of literacy and being able to learn about new cultures and places that you might not have had the opportunity to otherwise. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, Orion's going to talk about Race to Kindness and how it started and where it's going. Here at A Kid's Company About, we make podcasts, but also books, classes, and even more for kids and families just like yours. We've got a couple new and upcoming books in our Little Book About Board Book series, embracing toddlerhood's most essential topics. Here's one of our authors sharing a sneak peek. Hey, my name's Alicia, and I'm the author and illustrator of A Little Book About Grit, a new book in the series about what it means to never give up and how that superpower supercharges your growth. Learn more about A Little Book About Grit by visiting akidsco.com. Hi, I'm Nikita Simpson. And I'm Dr. Lockhart. I wrote a kid's book called A Kid's Book About Emotions. And I help kids and grown-ups work through their emotions. This is Everyday Feels, a podcast about emotions for kids and their grown-ups. I think it's so great when you have a person that you trust in your life, that you feel open and able to share everything that's going on inside of you. I agree, Nikita, because I think it takes so much confidence and bravery in sharing our stories and being vulnerable because we're trying to normalize talking about feelings and emotions. That means that we all have them and it's okay to talk about them because we all feel them. And you're always allowed to feel what you feel. Let's continue this journey together. This is Everyday Feels, a podcast about emotions for kids and their grownups. Welcome back to the Activators and my conversation with Ryan G. He's 10 years old, he's in sixth grade, and he's changing the world. That's pretty awesome. So what is Race to Kindness? The Race to Kindness is a series of events that all started about a year ago when uh, my teacher, she sent me an email about a speech contest that she wanted me to enter. Now, there was only one catch. There was only one day left to submit an entry. So, of course, I was a little bit skeptical about whether I should join or not because I had a disadvantage. I didn't have as much time as everybody else to work on my speech. But, you know, with the help of my mom and the advice of my mom, I decided to enter the contest. And the speech that I wrote after being uh, tweaked a little bit by a speech coach in the second round of the speech that was able to uh, win the contest. And I was given some prize money to start the Race to Kindness. Now, my first project was the Race to 500 Toys, where we partnered with a local children's hospital to uh, help children in the hospital who were not getting as many toys as they were used to because of COVID. And you could only use a toy once. You used to be able to uh, use the toy, disinfect it, and you know, pass it on to another child. But now, just to be safe, you could only use it once and throw it away. And we were able to collect 619 toys within a month. And the second project was the Race to 100,000 Meals, where with the help of the community, the country, and really the world, we were able to collect over 100,000 meals uh, in a couple of months. And now we are on the Race to 500,000 books, where we are hoping to be able to collect 500,000 books by the end of August. Out of three years of you doing this, what's happening right now? What's the latest? We are now at about 100,000 books. Uh, Well, maybe more than 100,000. It's like 120,000-ish right now. 
And we are hoping that, you know, even though we still got a long ways to go, we are hoping that with the help of our country, that we will be able to reach this goal and help as many people as possible. Listeners, can you imagine how much space you need to store 100,000 books? Uh, We learned our lesson that after the race to 100,000 meals, we were not going to keep everything in our house. We had to outsource. So we partnered with multiple organizations uh, that have different purposes, but all kind of the same goal to help as many people as possible get books. And they put them in their warehouses or some of them do book fairs. And we were able to deliver them to as many children as possible and adults as possible. Now, we still have some here in our home, but definitely not as many, thankfully. In the time since recording this interview, Orion reached his goal. He raised over 500,000 books by the end of August. And from what I hear, donations are still rolling in. This was the third year of the Race to Kindness. The year before, he raised 100,000 meals. How did you raise 100,000 meals? Like, how? Well, it was, I'm going to have to admit that it was a lot of work. And I definitely didn't do it alone. With the help of my friends, my family, uh, some people that I didn't even know, all coming together with one common goal, we were able to help as many people as possible. And that just goes to show that if you have a common cause, then hopefully people can come together and you can reach that goal. Yeah, that's so cool. All right, how do you picture the world in the future? Well, I hope that with the efforts of kids like me and adults and everyone, really, we will be able to create a future where there is no... Uh, no reason for me to have to collect 100,000 meals for those that are without or to have toys for children in the hospital because there will be no children in the hospital. And I won't have to collect 500,000 books for the children and adults who live in book deserts because there won't be book deserts. And hopefully, with the help of as many people as possible, we will be able to create a better future where there are is no one that is without and that everyone has the same opportunities and privileges so we can all you know create a better tomorrow that's great so i heard you doing something with the kids book about uh can you tell us about your book yes absolutely i am working with a kids book about on a book called a kids book about leadership and it is about how everyone has the potential to be a leader they might just not know it yet and The book is all about how some people need to find the untapped potential inside of them so that they can become some of the world's greatest leaders because we all have it in us. We just may need somebody to tell us that for us to, for it to fully bloom. Okay, so for every listener who's listening right now, we're going to give Orion a big activator share on three. Hi, so are you in your superhero pose? Are you ready to say activators on three? Okay, three, two, one, activators! Hi, thank you so much, Ryan. It is my pleasure. It was great to chat with Ryan. I learned so much from him. Here are some things I learned and lessons we can take with us as we make the world a better place. Number one, I learned what book deserts are. Book deserts are when people don't have access to books. Number two, Orion had help from his friends and family, even people he didn't know, coming together to help him reach his goal. And more, more brains are better than one. Number three, Orion is only 10 years old, and he's done so much. So I believe even more that kids can really change the world. Orion was able to use what he loves to spread more love. He loves reading, and he found a way to spread his love of reading to other people by donating 500,000 books. How cool is that? What do you love to do, and how can you combine that 
with what you love and helping the community around you, just like Orion. Thank you to Orion Jean for joining us today. You can find all about Race to Kindness by visiting www.racetokindness.com. The Activators is written by me, Leo Abelo Perry, with a little help from my mom. Our show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner, with help from Chad Michael Snaper and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory, and this show is brought to you by A Kids Podcast About. You can write to us at listen at akidspodcastabout.com. And check out our other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting akidsco.com. See you again next week for another episode of The Activators! Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at A Kid's Company About. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at A Kid's Podcast About. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kid's Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Yeah.